Uh, welcome to Helping Organizations Thrive. Uh, today, I have the pleasure of uh, Deborah uh, Battersby on the show today. Uh, welcome, Deborah. Thank you, Julian. Uh, it's really good to see you and thank you for coming on the show. I'm just going to tell our audience a little bit about you. You are the owner of Success Matrix uh, International, which is an executive transformation for high achieving entrepreneurs and business leaders. You are a sort of Tony Robbins uh, international master trainer, you're a keynote speaker, and prior to that, you spent over 30 years within the real estate business as a coach and trainer. So we've got vast amounts of expertise, vast amounts of experience, and it's great to have you on your show today. And uh, before we get into a little bit more about you, I I'm just going to share with the audience that we're going to explore today as we come to the end of uh, 2020, uh, 2020 and we're going into 2021, I want us to really uh, give something to leaders today. And, and we're going to talk about the, the power of the subconscious in leadership and something that really will help ground uh, leaders of today uh, for this next season as we enter into 2021. But before we go into that, um, I always ask my, my guests on my show is, you know, what do you love about what you do? You know, it's, it's fascinating because I think I've been um, addicted to personal growth most of my professional life, um, primarily because I've always been fascinated with human potential. You know, what are we really capable of? What is within our capacity to to contribute to the world that we might not even know about yet. And I've just always been curious about what is that thing we call potential and how do we get to it? You know, and I, and I firmly believe that our potential and our possibilities are far greater than anything we could possibly fathom. And finding ways to tap into that for myself, help other people tap into that, is, is really been a fascinating journey and a, a, one of the most curious puzzles I think I've ever you know encountered in my in all of my life. Um, I also love entrepreneurs and business leaders. You know there's a lot of challenges going on in the world today and I do not have faith in political, resources to solve our problems. I do not have faith in cultural ideologies and religious ideologies to solve our problems because oftentimes all they really do is create conflict uh, because there's this ownership that there's only one right thing to believe or one right thing to do. So I've always believed that the entrepreneurs because they come to serve, they come to solve a problem. I've always believed that they are, you know, they're the hope of the world. They're the ones who are going to solve our biggest problems. They're the ones who are going to usher in the technologies, the insights, the possibilities, the, the mashups, the synthesis that's going to create mm. solutions that we have yet to uh, comprehend. So, you know, and I have to throw the scientists in with the entrepreneurs because they're mavericks in the same spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, but the entrepreneurs, I love them because they risk their willingness to risk their hard earned uh, capital, their, their time, their energy, their, their mental abilities to create something that is going to be of service to others. So I think they're, they are modern day heroes um, and I love working with them. And I, I know that the, the people on this call understand what it's like to be that, um, that spirit that's willing to go a different way, mm. to try something different, to try something new. Yeah, and it's interesting you talk about the entrepreneurs being the sort of the heroes, the, the sort of mavericks. And um, just, uh, you may not be aware of this or not, but in the UK today, we have just um, approved the vaccine for COVID that was uh, came out of a partnership with Pfizer, and I think it's Bio BioNTech, BioNTech. And BioNTech is a, a small company that came out yes, of yes, a, I'm it's a, it's a, it's a, um, 
husband and wife who owned the business many years ago and a passion for for cancer care and development and they set they, they scrapped everything at the beginning of the year to concentrate on a covid vaccine and they've created a vaccine that is now being approved in the wow. uk and will be coming out into well next week so it's interesting how entrepreneur that was an, mm -hmm. and obviously Pfizer they're not entrepreneurial but in terms of this company are entrepreneurial working with Pfizer yeah. and how it's come from a smaller sort of I guess organization it's interesting how they're willing to to risk uh, to push the boundaries to innovate and to do something Absolutely. which is incredible and that's and, and it's uh, and I, I love that about entrepreneurs I agree with you that there's something about an entrepreneur who are pioneering things you know if you go back to you know, the last crisis, 2007 and eight, you know, we, Uber came, that was entrepreneurial at the start and that's huge yeah. business, Airbnb, these yeah. things that, that that set and change dynamics of how we interact. People may not agree with them, um, but yeah. they were entrepreneurial and it's fantastic. Um, Absolutely. And what they did was so innovative because, you know, the, the essence of the shared economy is that you're pooling resources of millions of people around the world to provide a service to millions more. Whereas the, the genius of that, it's just, it's bringing together like a coalition, like the, it's like the biggest co-op in the history mm. of the world where resources come together to provide a business option for mm. consumers. And it, 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 it's quite brilliant. And, you know, I was thinking about even the large corporations, even within those large corporations, the fact that there's a, a, a huge amount of their focus is always in research and development. Mm. That, because that is the essence of growth of the entrepreneur. There has to be that commitment to developing new ideas, new concepts, mm. researching challenges. So even the biggest, you know, you know, cumbersome corporate structures that we know of are still in their essence entrepreneurial, mm. even though they might get a little bit bogged down and bureaucratic. Um, the the essence of what they are and what they do is highly entrepreneurial, and you know, I I have to say that I am I am quite um, overjoyed that the that this company is coming out that they're coming out with a vaccine and 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 perhaps it, it the reason that is so important you know this year has been horrific for so many people mm -hmm. the you know the covid pandemic has been for some negligible impact for others, complete devastation. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, so many companies have, uh, have, have not found a way through or beyond, you know, the, the issues, particularly small business. And f for me, it's extremely personal because uh, my husband passed away five days ago from COVID complications. And believe me, the the hope of a vaccine that could prevent that tragedy for thousands, hundreds of thousands around the world is uh, is quite mm. a beautiful a beautiful thing to share. And Julian, thank you for telling me that because I mean that's been in my prayers for days now that somehow, some way that some solution comes forward because. Um, because the the devastation mm. of this kind of loss, um, this is the first time in my life where I've had to understand that firsthand. So, again, to the entrepreneurs of the world who are every single day making the effort to make things better for all of us. Mm. And I'm I'm sorry for your loss, uh, Deborah, and I I admire your. Um, uh, courage. I know we had a conversation before we started whether we carry on and you, you want to carry on and I, I admire your courage and your vulnerability uh, and that, I really appreciate that and that's that spirit of, of not not just being stoic, not just being stiff up a lip in the UK of just cracking on but bouncing back and uh, you know and I'm sure you'll have some challenging days still ahead 
but you're showing true resilience where you're looking to try and um, honor a commitment, even though we, I was happy not to do it, but honor a commitment uh, that would allow and perhaps impact some people right now who are watching this or hearing this on the podcast. And so, yeah, I thank you for that. And um, it's quite remarkable, really. Uh, and the fact that I, I know I got to know you in this way, it's it's quite incredible. So, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, you're amazing. Um, Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Julian. And, you know, as, I, as I, I, I mentioned to you when we first started our conversation that, you know, I trust that this is this is guided in some way and that the, that the message that I'll share today would be very different than a message I might have shared a week ago. Um, but it, it's most important for in, in this conversation for me to help all of you remember that there is a power within you that is so vast and so extraordinary and that learning to tap into that and maybe it's not so much learning as as intending i think there's so many things we know intuitively that we don't understand, uh, but we have this phenomenal gift of the subconscious um, that you know handles probably 80 to 90 percent of every single function we uh, experienced every day of our lives. Uh, but there's also the a gateway to the superconscious, something that is even beyond the subconscious automatic behaviors. Um, you know, Napoleon Hill first talked about this, you know, gosh, back was it in the 1930s, 40s? Um, you know, I'm trying to remember when Think and Grow Rich was written, but he, he studied success long before he wrote that book. Um, but he refers a lot to the power of auto-suggestion. And Auto-suggestion is really all about influencing the subconscious. Mm. And what I would like to, you know, help people remember is that your success is, is at most 20% strategy. It is 80% psychology, if not 90% psychology. And it's not and it's, it's not just the psychology of who you are. It's the psychology of what you think, how you think, um, what rules you set up for yourself, your life, your expectations. It's, it's about all of those things you impose upon yourself as well mm -hmm. as the things you impose upon others. So it, taking charge of developing the healthiest psychology and subconscious patterning that you can is where your greatest power lies, that you have the opportunity to influence, to overcome your fears, your doubts, your insecurities, your uncertainties, your uh, it, your, your trust issues, your anxieties. There's and we all have them. I mean, you know, we're we're this um, amazing chemical factory of emotional experience, and we have access to thousands of emotions. Uh, I think some of the research says that we experience that we have access to over more than four thousand emotions that we have words for, mm. and then we have emotions that we just have sounds for. And there's mm. thousands of those as well. And every single one of those emotions creates a chemistry in the body. Mm. And a big part of managing or directing your day, your, your impact, your influence is tapping into the emotions that are going to best serve you. Now, one of the ways that Napoleon Hill talked about that was auto-suggestion. The perfect time to do that is as you're drifting off to sleep and as you're first waking up in the morning when the brain is not in, you know, the, the typical um, brainwave pattern, but you're drop or you're, you've slipped into or you're just coming into or out of a, a theta brainwave. 
this is where you um, are most, um, you have the most influence over your subconscious. Okay, and interesting. This is uh, the opportunity. So this is this is before you go to, just before you go to sleep. Just before you drop off. Just before sleep, you wake up. Just before you wake up. Now I'm gonna, you know, most of my coaching, my research, my fascination is around emotional and behavioral patterning. And particularly how it uh, that applies to, you know, high achievers. But I, I I want to share a paradigm. And if I'm bouncing all over the place, I apologize. And I and I hope that we'll, if people have questions, they can reach out to us, um, because this is definitely not a scripted conversation. <laughs> uh, but one of the the things that I've learned in my exploration is that every single emotion you experience is here to serve you. Your fear, your doubt, your worry, your anxiety, your depression, your mm. trepidation, your annoyance, your irritation, your frustration, your confusion, I do not care what it is, that emotion is here to serve you. Many of the emotional patterns that we run are highly organized protection patterns. Those patterns were established before, usually before the age of seven or eight, mm. when there is no real cognizant processing or filtering. Everything is just taken in at, at, at literal uh, and face value. Well, it's, it's almost based. It's based on our survival instincts, isn't it? Our, our body, our body has is being created, and everything is to to create survival. You know, yeah. in exactly. terms of running away. You know, uh, you know, in terms of you know stopping pain, so you can run away. Where people have severed limbs and they carry on running, and there's no pain, and then suddenly they stop once they're escaped the the sort of battlefield, then the pain comes, and that's your body amazingly. <laughs> set for survival however as you know it can be something that goes against you and causes some challenges and issues that we are not helpful <laughs> well and you know the the interesting thing is that i think because either we lost the uh awareness of of how that system actually works and we we let the intellect be it be superior to intuition and automated uh self preservation mm. uh, so there may have come a time in our evolution where we let the intellect be superior to everything and so we have for oh my gosh it, probably modern civilization has downplayed emotion for you know hundreds of years mm. uh, and the Brits are really good at this as you talked about you know that stiff upper lip it's like <laughs> you know, contain control manage those emotions now in I guess my my discovery has been is that you see those protective patterns are absolutely brilliant in that you know if if playing small is a pattern that you run believe me you started that pattern a long time ago when it wasn't safe somewhere you in your environment to express yourself it wasn't safe, it wasn't tolerated, it wasn't allowed, it wasn't sanctioned, it wasn't approved of, and sometimes it was punished. So if you have a pattern of playing small, I'd be willing to bet it goes back a long, 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 long way. And the challenge with the subconscious is that once a pattern is established and it works, the subconscious does not let go of it because it's effective. Mm. So even though you're not seven or eight, you're 37, 47, 57, your subconscious is still running a particular pattern mm. based on protecting a child. And that, and what I've learned in my research and exploration is that you can actually go into um, conversation and a dialogue with the subconscious to release those patterns, to release them, to modify them, to upgrade them, to combine them, uh, to even install brand new patterns. And 
I think that's one of the things I love most about the subconscious. It has no limits, whatever. So, has, so what? So, what are you? Is that? I mean, is that using the NLP sort of approach? Well, or I've, is that other I've, other other techniques you're using to change people's I I guess, programming? A slight, um, a, a slight induction phase that's a bit like a meditation. Perhaps um, you might call it like a slight trance, but anytime you go into meditation, you're in a trance. Uh, it has some, you know, of the the fundamental elements of hypnotherapy. Yeah. But really, all that component is designed to do is to bring you into that different brainwave, uh, so that there's access to different information. And the beautiful thing about the working with the subconscious is once you're into that that state of you know of uh, different brainwave vibration mm. the amount of intelligence that can come through the subconscious will blow your mind um i often describe a session uh, as eavesdropping on the wisdom of the universe some of the things that come, you know, from people's in, insight, intuition, their their knowing beyond their intellectual knowing, mm. uh, is just incredible. And the subconscious is the perfect playground for transformation, uh, because it will it can it can reset in a heartbeat. There's there's no there's no structure, there's no conditioning, there's no repetition required. Mm. The subconscious, um, I think uh, Maxwell Maltz said, it's the ultimate theater of the mind. Uh, you know, often it's interesting because a, a lot of references in personal development talk about the theater of the mind. But I don't think that's accurate. I think it's the theater of the subconscious. The mind is always trying to find logical explanations and mm. connections and wants to rationalize justify understand mm. or explain the subconscious doesn't need any of that mm. it it just is willing to create and recreate release and install um where the, and in the kind of coaching that i'm talking about ultimately we align the subconscious and the conscious mind but often the, the reality is that our conscious mind is the part that sits in judgment and criticism. It's the part that says, that's stupid. You're an idiot. You shouldn't be doing that. What makes you think that, you know, you can't get it right. Mm -hmm. You're never going to be enough. The conscious mind is just constantly in judgment and criticism. Mm -hmm. It has a powerful intention behind that. Because even all that self-criticism is designed to help you grow, to help you strive toward what the ideal you've set for yourself. So mm. all the crazy things that we do that we think are so uh, insane or destructive are actually every single one of them is designed for our highest good. So yeah, it's interesting our opportunity I, I always, is to stop I, judging it. Yeah. Sorry, it just that, that whole when people go on about imposter syndrome, actually having a an internal self-critic sense of I don't know can create that growth. It can create the the opportunities. It can make you more resourceful. It I, I think it's a healthiness to have. It keeps you so it keeps you alive. It keeps you on your toes. And I think it's it's healthy not to think I'm invincible. I, I I've got everything. I've got every limiting belief smashed and everything else. And I don't think we have limiting beliefs, but I think they they produce greater growth in areas perhaps you wouldn't have thought of because they they stimulate something very different. Um, in terms of, I agree. If, if there's a leader out there now, um, obviously coaching and 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 one on one's great. But if you're there, how can I? How can they? In with themselves, how can they start to change that narrative? and use ways whether is it meditation that will create that sort of um, I guess, dynamic change I guess the first thing, the first thing is to be open to the possibility that everything you're feeling is here to serve you that it just be open to that instead of judging it and negating it and trying to repress it 
um, just receive it. You know, that it's, it's here, it truly is here to serve you. So for example, if you're second guessing yourself as a leader, if you want to get still in life, particularly, like I said, before you're drifting off to sleep or when you're waking up in the morning, in those moments of kind of like where you're in limbo, you're you're not quite fully conscious and you're not quite unconscious. And you're in a place where you can just ask a question. You can ask a question of this second guessing, okay? I, I know that oftentimes for leaders who have huge decisions to make, indecision or second guessing can really get in the way of moving forward. So mm. let's take those as an example. Now, if, if you trust, if you're willing to trust that that information, that emotional experience is here to serve you, the question is how? So rather than try to overcome that feeling or to negate or judge that feeling, just go, and, and I, I ask this question, this is how I ask the question, and this is how I do it in my coaching sessions, how I do it with myself. The question is, if it's true, that you, and I talk to this emotion, this feeling as if it were an entity, if it's true that you're here to serve me, what is your intention? Wow. If it's true that you're here to serve me, what is your mm. intention? And I'm gonna share a very personal experience that happened to me a number of years ago that I think other people can relate to. Uh, but you can substitute any emotion for the one that I share with you and imagine going through that experience. So this was a number of years ago. I was actually at a, um, I was helping uh, support a, a large team at a, a big seminar. And it was probably like four o'clock in the morning and I'm crawling into bed exhausted. And I'm noticing I'm having a lot of lower back pain. And I'd only been, I'd probably been working on this theory, this coaching theory for about eight or nine years at the time. And so I'm, call, I'm crawling into bed and I'm noticing this pain in my lower back. And I'm, and so as I'm, you know, in that twilight space where I know I'm really exhausted and ready to drift off, I'm focusing on the lower back pain and I'm asking the question, and by the way, this is true of every pain you will ever experience. It has an emotional construct. So I'm asking the pain, what are you? What are you really? And the first thought that came, there were two or three things that came to my mind, but somehow or other, you know, my body didn't respond to that. Mm. And then what came up was the, the, it said, I am the feeling of being unsupported. Mm. And you know that it's real when tears start to trickle down your face or you get those those goosebumps or you get those chills or you get you get a physical confirmation mm. and so as this was happening i said i'm the feeling of unsupported and my first thought was my first thought was that's insane that's totally stupid Deb, you have a great support system around you. You have all kinds of people that support you, et cetera. And then the part of me that is really looking for the purity of the work said, shut up and listen. Mm -hmm. And, and I said, so, so the conscious mind wanted to intervene and say, that's, you know, that's insanity. But I said, okay, step back, just go with it. Just allow the conversation. 
And this, so, this is this is you talking, self-talking. Yeah. This is me and my yeah. self-talk. Yeah. yeah. And we, by the way, we talk to ourselves all the time. So, <laughs> so. Fully, if you're not fully aware of it, you'll become aware of it. But so as so, my thought was, OK, this is crazy. And then I said, OK, just shut up and, and be open to whatever comes. And so then the next question is, you know, because it, I didn't know what the feeling was, but now I know it's the feeling of unsupported. And so the next question is, if it's true that you're here to serve me, what is your intention? Okay. And I got some of the most profound wisdom. And, I, and I'll never forget this experience. It's as, it's as if the conversation is as fresh for me today as it was, mm -hmm. you know, nine or ten years ago. And it was, I came, the answer was, I came to give you backbone. I came to give you the courage to stand up for yourself. I came to give you the courage to stand up for others. Wow. And wow. the reason I'm sharing this with you is because I have never had that low back pain since. Amazing. Incredible. That's incredible. And this is what I mean about the power of what your body is doing for you, mm -hmm. what your subconscious is doing for you that you have no clue about and that you're judging and criticizing inaccurately. You're interpreting it all wrong. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in, in the beginning of my exploration of the, you know, the power of the subconscious <clears throat> and my first explorations into the emotional realm, you know, it occurred to me that there are so many intricate, fascinating, uh, indescribable systems in the body. Mm -hmm. The respiratory system, the immune system, the cardiovascular system, the gland, the endocrine system, the you, know, you name it. Okay, and I know that science has been able to support these systems, sometimes repair these systems, but never improve these systems. The systems are flawless. You know, the the evolution of the the human engineering is like. God, I mean, it's way beyond mind blowing. So it occurred to me that if the emotion is a natural part of the human experience, then it must be a communication system. And if that's true, wouldn't it be as flawless as every other system in the body? There's not one system in the body that is designed to be self-destructive, not one. No. Talking about that in the very beginning, that survival instinct. We are a servile mechanism. We are designed to survive first, then thrive, then actualize that mm. path of the of each and every one of us. But if you don't get past for survival, you don't get to thrive. And if you don't get to thriving, you don't get to actualize. No. You know, going all the way back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Mm. So but those protective patterns that we're running again mm. were established at a time when we were most vulnerable because we had very little influence over our environments. By the time mm. you're eight years old, you don't have much influence anywhere. So those protective mechanisms came intuitively, instinctively to protect, to motivate, to inspire, to push, to drive, to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, every single one of those things. But the patterns don't mature mm -hmm. with our intellect and our experience. Mm -hmm. And that's why tapping into the subconscious allows us to communicate with those information patterns mm -hmm. and help them evolve or help them adjust to our current level of insight, experience, understanding. Does that make sense? I, I hope I'm making No, this. it makes, it's interesting. I, I found that story um, incredibly, well, powerful and profound. And, and it's, I've never 
thought of the, where you said the pain becomes a basic a communication piece and and then entertaining and asking what's your intention and and using that as a way to understand what it's trying to tell you what your body's trying to tell you what your brain or your subconscious how, however you want to wrap it up exactly yeah. and it's interesting because i we all we all know and this is where i think you know um we all know that pain is there's there's the what we call the ascending pathway to your brain where you you put your hand near a fire and you get the instant you know that because it's firing it up but a lot of people might not be aware of and this is where you could call it power of the mind there's the descending pathway where your brain fires down and, and whether that's you know the whole phantom limb sort of uh, expression where people have on who have lost a limb they still feel it or you know somebody's lost an arm in a battle and it fires down and cuts off the makes analgesia so basically you can't feel the pain and it's interesting and I, and I suppose for me it's taking that next step actually you're then subconscious firing down to a pain in your back creating a, a pain in the back and obviously the location of the back support and everything else which then you start to entertain and that, that that's interesting i i think that's very that's fascinating and it it's because our bodies are amazing <laughs> and the more we yeah. understand the more i understand yeah. how it works is just fascinating and mind-blowing um i think that's quite powerful really and you fa you it, that for you is this twilight zone of going into sleep sort of where you well, get these moments the are way, better and the other way of doing it is going into a light meditation you know and um a, a quickest way to for me to access that is just deep breathing exercises uh, there's, you know, the there's the four by four breathing. There's the just breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the mouth. Um, there's a number of different techniques to just mm -hmm. really take control of your breathing to bring you into that more receptive and open state. And when you can go into those states, you can begin, you can actually begin asking those questions and then journaling understand though that when you're guiding this yourself the conscious mind <clears throat> really does want to interfere it wants to figure it out so oftentimes even when you're asking questions and and you're you're responding mm -hmm. it oftentimes it's the intellect of the conscious mind that's giving you your first set of answers but as you continue you drop into that deeper intuitive response and mm. and you know instantly because the body will tell you it'll be a tear it'll be a shiver it'll be a um a, a tingling a, a temperature change mm. there will be a physical manifestation when mm. when you hit that point it's like um i heard a poem many years ago that helps me recognize when truth shows up and it's probably the most beautiful poem i've ever heard and it's one line when a tongue speaks the truth every cell in creation testifies wow. mm. so when you have those shivers and those chills and the hair on the back of your neck or the hair on your arms or that temperature change or that gut feeling or that intuitive mm. hit comes to mm. me, that is validation of truth. When a tongue speaks the truth, mm. every cell in creation testifies. Um, that was written by a woman by the name of Vika Syandrich. Um, I met her briefly years and years ago. And I will never forget that, you know, what she shared with mm. me that day. And so, again, you, I, some of you may be familiar with John Kehoe's work uh, called Mind Power. Uh, I highly recommend it. Um, but John's premise is that, you know, most modern psychology thinks that the intellect or the conscious mind is the navigator of destiny. John's perception is that 
it that's that's actually not true hmm. that the conscious mind has a partnership with the subconscious mind and the conscious mind is really designed when it's aware is to and jim Rohn said this years ago stand guard at the doorway of your mind the conscious mind is meant to be the centurion that stands guard at the gates of the subconscious that it it tells you what to reject and as we evolve intellectually there's a lot of things we hear that we just go that's pure nonsense you know that doesn't make sense that doesn't resonate that doesn't align and so we don't let it into the subconscious but all the stuff that came into the subconscious before the the intellect was developed enough to filter mm -hmm. is all in there confused jumbled up that's why we have conflicting beliefs mixed emotions because there is no filter nothing guarding the doorway to the mm -hmm. subconscious and so so much of the inner turmoil or conflict that we experience goes back to those early information patterns mm -hmm. so according to john kehoe's perspective the conscious mind and the subconscious mind have a contract <laughs> and that the body is full is actually the navigator of destiny because the body filters millions of bits of information where the conscious mind can only handle so much but the body picks up the whole the whole neurological system is filtering all mm. And the skin being one of the biggest filtering organs of all. And according to John Kehoe's perspective, that the body and the soul have a contract. And the contract between the body and the soul is to awaken the heart. Wow. Well, wow. that's time is just run away with us, Deborah. And I could listen to you for much longer, but um I am conscious oh. of the time. <laughs> and, you know, and and, I'm so, I am so hopeful that we've shared something that that our, that your listeners are going to be able to actually use immediately. Um, and so I, I hope there's a few nuggets in there that can be, you know, taken to heart. But number one, trusting everything you feel is here to serve you, hmm. and just to ask what's its intention to not be suspicious of it or afraid of it because it is here to serve no and i and i think you shared some fantastic uh, insight there but also some things to make people think you're making me think and and i hope other people listening to this right now will start to scratch their heads a little bit and start to become a bit more holistic about uh, who they are and why they are and uh, might start to become more aware of the power of the unconscious um, and start to use that in a way that would uh, create that more uh, impactful leadership within their organizations. Um, I really thank you for your time today. Thank you for what's just happened in the last five days. Uh, my condolences to you again. Um, and so I do appreciate you giving up this time and sharing your, your wisdom. It's much appreciated. Thank you, Julian. It's been an honor to be with you and to share some of the things that are near and dear to my heart. But um, more importantly, you know, my whole intention is to help as many people as possible recognize their own capacity for greatness and to just step into it. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you.